Hello and welcome to today's mathematics lesson. My name is Lawrence Monson. In today's lesson, we shall look at a topic in statistics, and that is measures of spread or dispersion. At the end of this lesson, you will be expected to know how to find the range of a given set of values. You will also be able to, to find and define the uh, the interquartile range and the semi interquartile range. You also be able to estimate the median and the semi interquartile range for grouped data. So let us first start with the range. We have the following measures of spread or dispersion. The first one is the range. The second one is the interquartile range. Then we have the semi interquartile range. Semi interquartile range. Then we have the standard deviation. And the fifth one is the variance. You already know the measures of location, which are the mean, the median, and the mode, which we looked at earlier. But those are called the measures of location or the measures of central tendency. We have these, which are the measures of spread. They tell us how spread the values that we have are. So the range is usually based on the extreme values. It is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. The interquartile range well, is the difference between the quartiles that we shall look at. And then we have the semi interquartile range, standard deviation, and the variance. In today's lesson, we shall look at the first three the range, the interquartile range, and the semi interquartile range. We shall look at the standard deviation and the variance in a later lesson. So we define the range as follows. We say range is equal to highest value minus the lowest value. So whenever you have a set of values, the first thing to do is to arrange them in order of size, starting with the lowest to the highest. When you take the difference between the highest and the lowest, that value you get will be the range. Let's look at the following examples. We say find the range find the range of each of the following sets of values. Each of the following sets of values. The first one. We have five pupils who have scored the same, the same score in a test. The first one got seven. Another one seven, then we have seven, another one seven, another one seven. We want to find the range. Let's look at another example. We have five, six, seven, 
8 and 9. The third set, we have negative 13, negative 7, then we have 20 and 27. So for each of these three sets of values, we can find the range. We'll follow the definition of the range. The solution for the first set of values Remember, we define the range as the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. When you look at the first set, all the values are the same. We have 7, 7, 7, 7. So, the range in this case will be equal to what is the highest value. It's the same. So, it will be 7 minus 7. And the range in this case is 0. This happens when you have maybe a good number of pupils getting the same value. Then the range will be zero. What about the second set? The range, by definition, is the highest value minus the lowest value. The highest value we have is nine. The lowest value is five. So in this case, the range is 4. So the range will be 9 minus 5, which is 4. In the third set, we have the lowest value, negative 13, the highest value, 27. So the range will be equal to 27, which is the highest value, minus the lowest value, which is negative 13. You know, negative, negative, that will mean 27 plus 13. So the range in this case will be 40. Okay. The third example, actually, can even talk of temperature in some very cold countries, where maybe during the day, the temperature can even go as high as maybe 10. In the night, it goes very low below zero. So to find the range, you subtract the highest minus the lowest, as we have done. Now the minus minus, the integers there, will have a positive value. And that will be the range. So always remember, when you are given a set of values, you have to calculate the difference between the highest and the lowest. So next time in class, when you are given a test, Find who will be the highest pupil, who will get the highest value, and then who will get the lowest value. Find their difference. The mark, which is the highest, minus the lowest. That will be the range of that test that you have in your class. Okay, there are also other ranges which are based on observations within the data. These ranges, which are based on observations within the data, are what we refer to as to the interquartile range and the semi-interquartile range. So, let's look at the interquartile range. Interquartile range. You might abbreviate this to IQR, meaning interquartile range. The interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So the upper quartile will be denoted by Q3, the lower quartile by Q1. So we define the interquartile range, IQR as the difference between the upper quartile, which is Q3, minus the lower quartile, which is Q1. So the interquartile range will be Q3 minus Q1. The semi-interquartile range, semi-interquartile range, The 
remember, semi means a half, semicircle, half of a circle. So the semi intercortal range is half of the intercortal range. So when we say semi intercortal range, semi IQR, this will be equal to half of the intercortal range. So this will be Q3 minus Q1. We take the average of that difference. Okay, semi intercortal range will be half of Q3 minus Q1. Yeah, we might be wondering what are these Q3 and the Q1. How do we find them? Let us define what the quartiles are. The median divides the set of values into two equal parts. Remember, we define the median as the central score of an ordered set of numbers. So, when we have an ordered set of values, from the lowest value to the highest value, the median is the number exactly in the middle, which is exactly halfway. Now, the quartiles divide the set of values into two equal parts. That explains even the name. Quartiles comes from the word quarter. So the quartiles divide the measures into four equal parts. We have the median, which will be denoted by Q2. Then this median divides the, the values into two equal parts. It will be exactly halfway. The lower quartile is halfway between the lowest value and the median. The upper quartile will be exactly halfway between the median and the, half, the highest value. So you can see we have divided our set of numbers, if we show them on a number line, into four equal parts. We have one, two, three, four parts. So the median divides the set of numbers into two equal parts, while as the quartiles divide the set of values into four equal parts. The lower quartile will always be denoted by Q1. The median by Q2. The upper quartile by Q3. Let us now see how do we find this Q1, Q2, and Q3 when you have been given a set of values. Let's look at these three examples which are on our chart. The question says, find the lower quartile, Q1, the median, Q2, and the upper quartile, Q3, for each of the following sets of data. The first one, we have the numbers 2, 4, 3, 11, 8, 9, 6, and 9. How do you find the Q1, Q3, and Q2? The solution to the first one, you can see on our number line there, we said for us to find the Q2, Q1, and Q1, you must arrange the numbers in order from the lowest to the highest. So the first step, arrange the numbers in order. So first, we arrange the values in order of size. We arrange the values in order of size. Yeah. We'll start from the lowest value to the highest value. If we look at our first set, the lowest value is 2. followed by 3, then we have 4, the next number will be 6, there is 8, 9, and 11. So this is your first step. You arrange the numbers in order. We have 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 11. Now, for us to fix the median and the quartiles, the first one to fix is the position of the median. So first, fix the position of the median. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. Which would be the median? The number exactly in the middle, like 
our num our Q2 there. So when you look at these numbers, we have one, two, three on the left hand side. I can also have one, two, three on the right hand side. The number in the middle will be the median. So the six here is Q2. Always start by fixing the position of the median. Then you fix the lower and upper quarter. As we said, the median has divided this set of numbers into two equal parts. We have the right and the left. Now look at the left hand side. We have three numbers. Again, pick the one in the middle. Three. This three will be the lower quarter, which is Q1. On the right hand side, again, we have three numbers. The number exactly in the middle, that will be Q2. Q3. Let's compare it with our line. We say the median will divide the numbers into two, while as the quartiles divide the numbers into four equal parts. So whenever you are finding the Q1, Q2, Q3, always start with the median, which we have there as Q2. Q3, the Q1 will be 3, and Q3 will be 9. Yeah. Then you write your answers down. You say lower quartile. Lower quartile Q1 will be 